Welcome to Chase Oaks. We are so glad that you are here. Wherever you are watching from, I completely believe with all my heart that today's message is going to add value to your life. We are wrapping up a collection of talks uh, called Mind Games that are giving us some mental frameworks to deal with perhaps the biggest battle that you and I deal with, and that's what goes on in between our, our ears. Uh, whether you are a Christian or not, all of us struggle with mind games. All of us can have our thoughts that can just spiral downward. I actually read a statistic once that, that may, really made me think, ironically. Uh, that, did you know that you and I, on average, get 6,000 thoughts per day? 6,000. We get, get 6,000 thoughts just today. Some people get 60,000. That's our overthinkers. Any overthinkers in the building today? Okay, these are the people. They didn't sleep last night. They just thought through the night. Nevertheless, on average, we get about 6,000 thoughts every single day. Did you know that 80% of those thoughts are negative? 80%. 80% of those 6,000 to 60,000 thoughts every single day are negative, which means you can have anywhere from 4,800 to 48,000 negative thoughts every single day. Did you also know that 95% of those thoughts are repetitive? Which means that you and I have the same negative Spotify playlist going on in our brain every single day. Like, here's what's interesting. Our most negative thought, it feels so new. It feels so fresh. I got news for you. It's old, okay? You've been having that same negative thought for a very, very, very long time. And guess what it's doing? It's robbing you of the peace that I believe God wants you to have. There are so many things in our life that can rob us of our peace, that can just make us have stinking Thinking, we could talk about relationships, parenting relationships, dating relationships, uh, your marriage, uh, your work relationships, uh, trying to get a house, uh, trying to get out of an apartment, uh, looking at another neighbor's house, comparison, uh, traffic can rob you of your peace and make you think bad thoughts, uh, social media can do that. Uh, our health. Honestly, I'm looking for an area in our life where we can't get pretty negative and lose our peace. But I just got a, I got a question for you this week. And how in the world are we supposed to get a W with that much thinking, thinking? How are you supposed to be the parent God's called you to be with that much stinking, thinking? How are you supposed to be the politician, the entrepreneur, the colleague, the friend? The person that God's called you to be with that much stinking thinking. I, I, I actually believe that God has a plan for your thoughts. But whether you're a Christian or not, I believe that, that what we're going to talk about today is absolutely going to radically change your thinking. And in preparation for this message, I came across a verse in Scripture that changed my life. And I just thought, I've never seen this, and this is awesome, and, and, and if we could just... Grab a hold to it. It's, it's got an idea in Scripture that I think changes the game for the whole world. And it's found in, in Proverbs 12, verse 20. Here's what it says. It says, Deceit is in the heart of those who dev devise evil. Watch this. But those who plan peace have joy. Did you know that there is an option where you can plan peace? But did you know that we can be peace planners? Because I used to believe that peace was a current state, like that I had to experience that in real time based off of my outcomes being how I would like them to be. But here's the writer of Proverbs, Solomon, one of the wisest men ever lived. He's going, hey, uh, there's, a, there's an option in your life. There's a version of your life where you actually could plan peace ahead of time. And so uh, this weekend, what I would love for us to do is to look at some areas in our, in our life where we can actually plan peace. I want us to be peace planners. So number one, I want to encourage us to plan peace for chaos. Plan peace for chaos. I love what Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33. He says, I have said these things to you 
that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Some of us are losing our minds because we are so shocked by setbacks, challenges, difficulties, pandemics, recessions, and our cell phone running out of battery. And in those moments, we just begin to lose our minds and lose our peace. But take courage in the words of Jesus. He's going, hey, uh, just so you know, trouble's coming. So you might as well prepare with a little bit of peace on the way. Can I just say this? You're going to hear me say this a couple of times, but I just, I, I just want to prepare us. 2024 is coming. Okay? An election year is coming. And, and I, I can just predict the future because I'm awesome. Let me just break it down for you. Somebody's going to win. Okay? I don't know who, but in that moment... There's going to be some people that have peace and some people that don't. I can just tell you what category I'm going to be in. I'm going to be in that category of people that have peace regardless of the outcomes. You go, why? Because I already planned it. I have made up my mind that I'm not going to surrender the peace of my soul to our government. They can control our taxes, but they're not going to control my soul. And so you have to make up your mind ahead of time. Chaos is coming around the corner. And you know what? I've already made up my mind. I'm going to be a peace planner. All of us can predict the future. You want to know what's in it for all of us? Chaos. This changes how you go to work. Can I, can I just prepare you for this week to be a peace planner? Because uh, there's somebody at your job, they are walking chaos, okay? They drive you crazy. Stop letting them catch you off guard and rob you of your peace and allow you to have so much stinking thinking because you're just so shocked they're in your class. You're just so shocked that they just mosey on by your cubicle and they're going to insinuate. They're going to hit reply all. They're going to send a text message and you're just going to let it send you right off the edge. No! We've seen this movie before. Stop playing the part in that movie. Be a peace planner. So when somebody comes and drives you crazy in your office, in your class, or maybe in your home, I want you to just pause for a little bit and just go, Ryan told me you were coming. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, Ryan said it was, yep, yep, he told... I didn't know it was going to be you, but it is you today. Here we are. And I've decided, I already, I already made a decision before my work week started, before my class has started. I just, I'm ready. You might have somebody over to the house for the holiday. And, and, and I can just tell you, you're going to have that one person that's a little rude, that one person that doesn't clean up after themselves. And you might be a clean freak, and you're just going to snap. Don't plan for it. Somebody dirty is on their way to your house. <laughs> just get it in your mind and just go, I, I've all, I, I am not going to continue playing this game. Jesus told me. Tribulation was around the corner, and sometimes it's a thing, and sometimes it's a somebody. And I just got to let you know something, okay? As, as awesome as you are, you might be somebody, somebody. <laughs> be a peace planner. People coming over to my house, listen, I just, I'm just going to put a little do not disturb sign on my soul. I refuse to be disturbed. Next year, people are going to be fighting back and forth. You're just going to be sitting on Come on, get in the fight. I have an opinion. I vote. I have some thoughts. But if you think I'm going to start getting my blood pressure up and I'm just going to be going back and forth with you on this and if you think I'm going to fall asleep losing... No, I... 
I actually saw this coming and I don't subscribe to a way of living that every four years I lose my mind and peace. I'm a peace planner. Some of you need to get ready for the holidays. Now. Like, dude, it's September. I'm already preparing for Christmas. For who's coming? Yes, you need to. But you cannot. Let chaos catch you off guard. I also think that you and I should plan peace for our adversities. I believe that chaos is different than adversity. Chaos is what happens all around us. And adversity is something that actually happens to us. It's the difference between being in a storm and a storm being in you. Something's happening. There is a challenge. There is a difficulty. And I just believe that you and I should again be peace planners. Contrary to popular belief. I believe that there is a version of your life where you can be in the middle of a worst case scenario. And still have peace. The reason I believe that is because of what we see in Daniel chapter 3 verse 15. It says... Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, I don't know what a zither is, but it sounds interesting, lyre, not the kind of lyre you're thinking of, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. You would think they would be defending themselves, facing fire. He says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Here's the part that I want us to grasp to be able to plan peace. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Some of us believe that we'll have peace when we have preferred outcomes, when our jobs stop talking layoffs, when our spouse stops talking divorce, when we start dating, when we get engaged, when we get married, when we get promoted, when interest rates go down. In that moment, okay, that, that's when I will have peace. What I would like to submit to you this weekend is that you can have peace in the middle of what you're going through in the middle of none of your preferred outcomes. Because there is this thing in us that just goes, well, it would be nice if, well, I just got everything that I want. But how often does that actually happen? No, there is a version of your life where you can invite God in and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to have peace. Whether my circumstance changes or not, just because your circumstance has not changed, does not mean your thinking can't. And so I just have to wonder what it would look like for you and I to be like these amazing young men who just simply said, hey, uh, I know my God, he's the rescuing type. That's just how he rolls. But in case he doesn't, our peace remains the same. And here's the interesting part. What I actually love about this story is that they actually got their preferred outcome. But they didn't need it to have peace. Because peace met them in a furnace. So if you find yourself going through a really hard time right now, or if you find yourself on a journey with God where you just don't really know where things are at, what I would encourage you to do this weekend is invite God to exactly where you're at. You might be facing a crazy amount of adversity but you can still be the kind of person that says you know what i pray that my circumstances change 
And I personally believe that our God is a healer. But in the event that he does not, that does not mean that I can't have peace, even sometimes when I'm sick. Because that's how our God works. And so here's what I know about you and me. Chaos is around the corner. And at some point in our life, whether we're going through it or we will go through some sort of adversity, it does not mean that we can't have peace right there in the middle of it. I love what Romans 12 verse 12 says. It says, be joyful in hope. And then it says something that I think is absolutely ridiculous. Patient in affliction. What? Faithful in prayer. Here's the Apostle Paul going, hey, whenever you face affliction, slow down. (laughs) What? No. Our temptation is to speed up. Let me go through this as fast as I possibly can. But what I would like to submit to you this weekend is that perhaps the Apostle Paul wants us to slow down so that God can meet us there. James 1 verse 2 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you sit at the 50-yard line at a Cowboys game. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I don't know what version I have up here. Let me start over. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. When you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James's mentality is, hey, whenever you're facing something, consider it an opportunity. Uh, here's what I know about you and me. Did you know that we can go through the exact same circumstances, but the difference between us can simply be our perspective? And our perspective changes absolutely everything. One person is going through the trial of their life, and they're they're waking up every single day going, I'm going to get better because of this. And another person is thinking, why is this happening to me? Another person might be thinking, why is this happening for me? It's just a mindset, which leads me to the third area I believe that you and I should plan peace for. I think we should plan peace for our pessimism because all of us have a little petty betty on the inside of us. There's a little bit of pessimism in you and I. If we're doing the math, probably about 4,800 thoughts worth that can rob us of our peace, but I believe we have to make a choice to plan ahead to focus on thoughts that line up with what God thinks about us. Second uh, Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. What I'd like us to consider this weekend is really asking ourselves who's in charge of our thoughts because again what the apostle paul is encouraging this church to do is to take captive their thoughts as if somebody else has them captive somebody else is is in charge could you consider actually uh writing down your core thoughts Like, what are the thoughts you just keep thinking over and over and over and over and over again? I'll never be this. I'll always be that. This is how it just works in my family, the way I grew up. And maybe there's a villain in your life. Somebody's to blame for why you aren't where you are by now. And you just keep thinking about them and rehearse it. Same old movie. Same old 4,800 negative thoughts. Let me ask you this. What have those thoughts done for you lately? Blaming someone else. For your demise. Did they just come and apologize and write you a check and say, I'm so sorry, I owe you? Is that a thing? It's not going to happen. I would encourage you to write down your thoughts. Call it a thought journal. And I would just ask you to consider looking at them objectively and go, who is this person? (laughs) And who's in charge here? Where do these thoughts come from? Because uh, when you think about who... Who could be in charge of our thoughts? There's a couple of options. Uh, one, social media, Facebook, Instagram, 
X, the artist formerly known as Twitter, I don't know what's going on, uh, Threads, you know. Someone, someone, somewhere is feeding your thoughts. Who's in charge? You might think that you are, but no, somebody else is behind the curtain feeding your negative thoughts. Is it a specific news channel? Is it a coworker? Is it a university who's in charge of your thoughts? Uh, might I submit letting God be in charge of our thoughts? Could I submit this idea of going, Lord, I, on my own, I got 4,800 negative thoughts I got to deal with every single day. But I just wonder what it would look like to hand those over to a Heavenly Father to say, but what? What is it that you actually think about me and my future and my relationships and my decisions? I, I love what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 4, verse 8. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Uh, I've got a question for you this weekend that I think is going to help you with, some, with having some peaceful thoughts. I, I want you to... Consider this week uh, answering this question. What's good? What's, what's good? What's really good? What's good? Because as negative as your world might be, guess what's in it? Some good. The boss of Paul is going, why don't you think about some things that are good? There are pros and cons of a lot of things. But have you ever thought about fixing your focus on what's really good? Good. Like, listen, I know, your, I know your spouse might be driving you crazy right now, okay? But, but I, I just want you to think about this. What's good about him? You're like, Ryan, you don't know my spouse. There's not much there. Okay, but I'm just telling you, but there's something there that you could consider going, you know what? It may not be as bad as I actually think. Like, you might have a job that just drives you crazy. I know, but what's good about that job? Maybe, maybe you work for somebody that is not a good person, but, but, but maybe there is some good there. You might have that neighbor, a special neighbor. They, they just love making noise late at night. And, but because you just think about for a minute, what, well, what's, what's good about them? What's good about this neighborhood? What's good about this class? What's good about this gym? Sometimes we're this character in a movie and we're amazing in this movie and everyone else is out to, to get us and we're constantly running away from zombies. And I, I don't know what's going on in, in your movie, but I just, I just have to imagine what it would look like, the kind of peace you would have in your life if you made a plan to say, you know what, this week I'm just going to ask the question, what's good? Maybe on a sticky note at your desk, you just write, what's good? Maybe you've got to keep it in your car because traffic in Dallas could just, can just get any one of us, okay, in a, in a completely different mood. Maybe on the dashboard you just, what's good? And the magic happens when you pull over and praise God for what is. Because now you're in a different position to go, you know what, Lord, I, I didn't just think about what's good. I want to thank you for what's good. What's good? I mean, this job is robbing me of so much peace. Or you could have the mindset that, thank God I have a job because there's a lot of people online looking for one right now. And I'm not one of those people. You want to know what that is? Good. So why don't I thank God for that? Your kids might be driving you crazy right now, playing peace. And just, what's good? If your kids are healthy right now, you ought to dance and shout. You ought to lift your hands high to the sky because I promise you each and every one of us is one trip from the children's hospital from a completely different reality. What's good? They're alive. They're healthy. You go, Ryan, they're loud. Yeah. But it could get real quiet really fast for a really bad reason. What's good? Your whole week could be different. You could get your peace back just because you wrote on a sticky note. What's really good? And you start thinking, that because this is all the Apostle Paul is going, he goes, I want you to focus on what's lovely, what's true, what's admirable, what's 
praiseworthy. Imagine if you just walked around your school. Imagine if you just walked around your job. Imagine if you just walked around your neighborhood. You just go, there's good here. There's good here. And I've decided to be a peace planner. And, it, and in order to protect my peace, I have to look for what's really good. I love these two verses. Isaiah 26, verse 3 says, it says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Whew, I mean, there's something powerful about somebody that's waking up on a daily basis going, Lord, I'm looking for you everywhere. And I see you everywhere. It's really hard to disturb somebody whose mind is focused on Jesus. Because you know who's actually in control of the world. You could be talking artificial intelligence and lose your peace in just a minute. You go, what's going to happen to the world? Pretty soon robots are going to be folding our clothes. And oh my gosh, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. Who's in control? Who's running the White House? Who's doing this? Who's did that? But when you go, I actually, I think God's in control of it all. And I trust him with my life. And I trust him with my career and I, and I trust him I was dropping my son off at school yesterday funniest thing happened he, he goes to, to this school next to a water tower okay so random the water tower people I guess they're, they have jobs there I guess and so but apparently the power went out and the water tower busted right next to the school and so you could literally see floods of water just coming towards the school. And I pulled up and I said, oh, what's going on here today? Because this don't look good. But nevertheless, the water was rushing out. And it, it, it stayed that way for about 25 minutes. Because at this school, you've got to get there three hours early just to get a good, good spot in line. And so I watched, just watched the floods just go for, for on and on and on and on. So like as soon as the power comes back on, we can shut it off. But this is just what it's going to be. And, and it's interesting, the floods just kind of just went downstream and just went off this like little cliff and nobody got hurt. But there was one mom who was so scared, she pulled out a line and said, my kid's not going to school today. And just took off. And I just went, lady, you need Jesus Christ in your life. Like this is... It's not that, what did you think was going to happen? It wasn't a tsunami. It was just a little power outage. Like, what? But sometimes we can get there. Some things can just get blown out of proportion, and we can feel like we could be looking at a little bit of rain, and it feels like our whole house is flooded. It's like, no, it's, it's just a little bit of water. And come to find out, most of us aren't allergic of water. And I just have to imagine, like, what would happen to us in our week and in our life if, if we were the kind of people that just say, man, I'm, I want to fix my mind on, on Jesus. I love what Psalms 119, 165 says. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. You want a real peace plan? Have a Bible reading plan. There's no better one. The reason you have so much peace when you are, are so addicted to God's word is you know how everything ends. <laughs> you know who's in control. You, you, you have this sense of no matter what's going on in your life, you go, we're going to be okay. We're we, we, we going to be all right. Because we've decided to be those people that have surrendered our life to Jesus. The last area I think we need to plan peace for is to plan peace for our decisions. Plan peace for our decisions. I think some of our biggest mind games where we lose our peace come from decisions that we have to make that feel like very, very tough decisions. Do we buy? Do we sell? Do we move? Do we quit? Do we go? Do we stay? Do we keep trying? Do we give up? Do we try harder? And I just love what the Apostle Paul says, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. It says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, 
to which indeed you were called in one body. And I just love his last three words. Oh, and be thankful. And oh, be thankful. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The word rule here in in Greek is uh, what they would use for a modern day umpire or a referee. Another way of reading this scripture is let the peace of Christ call the shots in your life. Let the peace of Christ be the deciding factor on if it's a strike or a foul ball. Let the peace of Christ be the filtration system that you and I use for decisions. And so there is a prayer that I want you to consider that my wife and I have used uh, for the duration of our marriage. It was something that I used um, even before we got married. And it's very, very simple. Whenever we're facing any kind of big decision, we simply say, Lord, give us peace or pause. Lord, give us peace or pause. Should we move? Because I can find myself on Zillow any minute. Just, man, well, let me see what's in the neighborhood. You know, let me, what's over there in Frisco? Man, let me see what they got down there in Plano. Man, oh, they build new homes over here. Oh, my goodness. This is a good old man. Oh, good. Well, well, this house has a basketball court. Man, they, they want $12,000 a month just in taxes. This is crazy. I can't do that. And so, like, you just, oh, would you give me peace or pause? Most of the time I get pause. Put the phone down and enjoy the house you got. Man, should we invest? Man, where's the market? A recession? Man, should we do that? Oh, you know, you get all this financial advice. And you're on X or Twitter, whatever it's called, and you just, uh, peace. Or pause. Uh, should you break up with that person? I don't know. Should they break up with you? You could be the crazy one. I don't know. <laughs> but I would ask that the Lord would give you peace. Or pause. I would ask that the peace of Christ would rule in your hearts and minds. Should you keep having children? I mean, Lord, give us peace. <laughs> or pause. Should we do private school, public school? Lord, would you give us peace? Or pause. Lord, I'm thinking about making a career jump. I'm thinking about getting into something else. So, yeah, okay, Lord, would you give them peace? Or pause. Because I, just imagine future decisions that you have to make. Imagine if you just said, I'm going to plan peace ahead of time. And I'm going to let peace make the decision. Decisions that I've yet to even make. You might have just started your senior year as a student here in the North Dallas Metroplex. And you already got some anxiety on thinking about what school you're going to go to. Lord, would you give me peace? Or pause. When I walk on a campus, Lord, would you give me peace? Or pause. Uh, you might be searching for a church. You might be church homeless right now. And you think you stumbled in here. I'm not going to twist your arm. I'm going to ask that the Lord would give you peace. Or pause. And that in that moment, you would make a decision to follow the peace of Christ. And so in summary... I want to encourage us to be the kinds of people that are peace planners. That we would plan peace for our chaos. That we would plan peace for our adversities. They're coming. That we would plan peace for our pessimism and our negative thinking. And that you and I would be the the kinds of people that take a a real step back to say, you know what? I got some decisions to make in my future. And Lord, I've already decided ahead of time. This is who I want to be. Some of us get so stuck on where we are that we can't eat. We didn't even know it was an option (laughs) to play in peace. This weekend, I don't want you to be reactive to your life. I want you to be proactive. I want you to be proactive with your thinking. 
To say by myself, I'm just going to be 80% negative most of the time and 95% repetitive and it feels like it's new, it's not, it's old. But I believe that you and I have an opportunity this weekend to be the kinds of people that are truly peace planners. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity that we've had to look at your word and look at some scripture to help us have peace of mind for my friends that maybe struggle with a lot of negative thinking and have lost some nights of sleep thinking about some things that aren't adding value to their life. God, I pray that you would help us plan peace for our future. Help us to be proactive with our thinking. Help us to be the kinds of people that look to the future, knowing that you have it in the palm of your hands and that we can trust you with ours. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen.